we all live in the most unusual time ever. And this is something that people might say often, but I think it's actually true this time. And the reason it's true this time is because of AI, right? Obviously. I mean, from what I hear, the AI of today has already changed what it means to be a student by a pretty considerable degree. That's what I, I sense, and I think it's true. But of course, the impact of AI goes beyond that. What happens to the kind of work we do? Well, it's starting to change a little bit in some unknown and unpredictable ways. Some work may feel it sooner, some work might feel it later. With today's AI, you can go on, so on, uh, on Twitter and you can look at what AI can do and what people say. And you might feel a little bit of that. You wonder, hey, which skills are useful? Which ones will be less useful? So you got these questions going on. And so you can say that the current level of challenge is how will it affect work and our careers? But the thing, the real challenge with AI is that it's really unprecedented and really extreme. And it's going to be very different in the future compared to the way it is today. Like, you know, we've all seen AI, we've all spoken to a computer and a computer has spoken back to us, which is a new thing. Computers would not do this in the past, but now they do. So you speak to a computer and it understands you and it speaks back to you. And it also does it in voice and it writes some code. It's, it's pretty crazy. But there are so many things it cannot do as well and it's so deficient. So you can say it still needs to catch up on a lot of things, but it's evocative. It's good enough that you can ask yourself, you could imagine, okay, fine. In some number of years, some people say it's in three, some people say it's in five, 10, numbers are being thrown around. It's a bit hard to predict the future, but slowly but surely, or maybe not so slowly, AI will keep getting better. And the day will come when AI will do all of our, all the things that we can do. Not just some of them, but all of them. Anything which I can learn, anything which any, any one of you can learn, the AI could do as well. How do we know this, by the way? How can I be so sure? How can I be so sure of that? The reason is that all of us have a brain and the brain is a biological computer. That's why. So why can't a digital computer, a digital brain do the same things? This is the one sentence summary for why AI will be able to do all those things because we have a brain and the brain is a biological computer. And so you can start asking yourselves, what's going to happen? What's going to happen when computers can do all of our jobs, right? Those are really big questions. Those are dramatic questions. And right now, like you start thinking about it a little bit, you go, gosh, that's a little intense. But it's actually only part of the intensity because what's going to happen? What, what will V, the collective V, want to use these AIs for? Do more work, grow the economy, do R&D, do AI research, so then the rate of progress will become really extremely fast, for some time at least. These are such extreme things, these are such unimaginable things. So right now I'm trying to pull you into that a little bit, into this headspace of this really extreme and radical future that the AI creates. But it's also very difficult to imagine. It's very, very difficult to imagine. It's very difficult to internalize and to really believe on an emotional level. Even I struggle with it. And yet the logic seems to dictate that this very likely should happen. What does one do in such a world? You know, there is a quote which goes like this. It says, you may not take interest in politics, but politics will take interest in you. So the same applies to AI many times over. And in particular, I think that by simply using AI and looking at what the best AI of today can do, you get an intuition. And as AI continues to improve in one year, in two years, in three years, the intuition will become stronger. And a lot of the things that we are talking about now, they will become much more real. They'll become less imaginary. In the end of the day, no amount of essays and, and explanations can, can compete with what we see with our own senses, with our own two eyes. And especially with the AI, the very smart, super intelligent AI in the future, there will be very profound issues about making sure that they, are, they say what they say and not pretend to be something else. And I'm really condensing a lot into a small amount of information here, in time here. But overall, by simply looking at what AI can do, not ignoring it, when the time comes, that will generate the energy that's required to overcome the huge challenge that AI will pose. And the challenge that AI poses, in some sense, is the greatest challenge of humanity ever. And overcoming it will also, have the, will also bring the greatest reward. And in some sense, whether you like it or not, your life is going to be affected by AI to a great extent. And so looking at it, paying attention, and then generating the energy to solve the problems that will come up 
that's going to be the main thing. I think that it is likely that we will have rapid economic growth. There are two arguments you could make, which are conflicting. Once indeed you get to a point where you have an AI that can learn to do things quickly, and you have many of them, and there will be a strong force to deploy them in the economy unless there will be some kind of a regulation that stops it, which by the way, there might be. I think the idea of very rapid economic growth for some time, I think it's very possible from broad deployment. The other question is how rapid it's going to be. So I think this is hard to know because on the one hand, you have this very efficient worker. On the other hand, there is the world is just really big and there's a lot of stuff and that stuff moves at a different speed. But then on the other hand, now the AI could, could yeah, exactly. you know, so I think very rapid economic growth is possible. And we will see like all kinds of things like different countries with different rules and the ones which have the friendlier rules, the economic growth will be faster, hard to predict. It seems to me that this is a very precarious situation to be in where looking the limit, we know that this should be possible because if you have something that is as good as a human at learning, but which can merge its brains merge their different instances in a way that humans can't merge. Already, this seems like a thing that should physically be possible. Humans are possible. Digital computers are possible. You just need both of those combined to f produce this thing. And it also seems like this kind of thing is extremely um, powerful. And economic growth is one way to put it. Um, I mean, Dyson Spear is a lot of economic growth. But another way to put it is just like, you will have potentially a very short period of time. Because a human on the job can you know, you, you're hiring people to SSI in six months, they're like net productive probably, right? Um, a human like learns really fast. And so this thing is becoming smarter and smarter very fast. What is, how do you think about making that go well? And why is SSI positioned to do that well? Where does SSI's plan there basically is what I'm trying to ask. Yeah. So one of the, one of the ways in which my thinking has been changing is that I now place more importance on AI being deployed incrementally and in advance. One very difficult thing about AI is that we are talking about systems that don't yet exist, and it's hard to imagine them. I think that one of the things that's happening is that in practice, it's very hard to feel the AGI. We can talk about it. It's like talking about like the long future, like imagine like having a conversation about like, how is it like to be old when you're like old and, and frail and you can have a conversation, you can try to imagine it, but it's just hard and you come back to reality where well, that's not the case. And I think that a lot of the issues around AGI and its future power stem from the fact that it's very difficult to imagine. Future AI is going to be diff different. It's going to be powerful. Indeed, the whole problem, what is the problem of AI and AGI? The whole problem is the power. When the power is really big, what's going to happen? And one of the one of the ways in which I've changed my mind over the past year, and so may back propagate into into the plans of our of our company. So if it's hard to imagine, what do you do? You got to be showing the thing. You got to be showing the thing. And I maintain that I think I think most people who work on AI also can't imagine it because it's too different from what people see on a day to day basis. I do maintain here is something which I predict will happen. That's a prediction. I maintain that as AI becomes more powerful, then people will change their behaviors. And we will see all kinds of unprecedented things which are not happening right now. And I'll give some examples. I think for better or worse, the, the frontier companies will play a very important role in what happens, as will the government. And the kind of things that I think you'll see, which you see the beginnings of, companies that are fierce competitors starting collabor to, to collaborate on AI safety. You may have seen OpenAI and Anthropic doing a first small step, but that did not exist. That's actually something which I predicted in one of my talks about three years ago, that such a thing will happen. I also maintain that as AI continues to become more powerful, more visibly powerful, there will also be a desire from governments and the public to do something. And I think that this is a very important force of showing the AI. That's number one. Number two. Okay, so then the AI is being built. What needs to what needs to be done? So one thing that I maintain that will happen is that right now people who are working on AI, I maintain that the AI doesn't feel powerful because of its mistakes. I do think that at some point the AI will start to feel powerful, actually. And I think when that happens, we will see a big change in the way all AI companies 
approach safety. They'll become much more paranoid. I think I, I say this as a, predic- as, a, as, a, as a prediction that we will see happen. We'll see if I'm right. But I think this is something that will happen because they will see the AI becoming more powerful. Everything that's happening right now, I maintain, is because people look at today's AI and it's hard to imagine the future AI. And there is a third thing which needs to happen. And I think this is, this, this, and, and I'm talking about it in, in broader terms, not just from the perspective of SSI, because you asked me about our company. But the question is, okay, so then what should, what should the companies aspire to build? Yeah. What should they aspire to build? And there has been one big idea that actually every, that, um, everyone has been locked, in, locked into, which is the, the self-improving AI. And why, why did it happen? Because there is fewer ideas than companies. But I maintain that there is something that's better to build. And I think that everyone will actually want that. It's like the AI that's robustly aligned to care about sentient life specifically. I think in particular, it will be, there's a case to be made that it will be easier to build an AI that cares about sentient life than an AI that cares about human life alone, because the AI itself will be sentient. And if you think about things like mirror neurons and human empathy for animals, which is, you know, you might argue it's not big enough, but it exists. I think it's an emergent property from the fact that we model others with the same circuit that we used to model ourselves because that's the most efficient thing to do.